Morning, everybody. Um, Zeppa, Vash, thank you, thank you very much. That, that was in very enlightening and, and brilliant. I think what you don't understand and what you forget is that without the compute, none of that stuff's going to happen anyway. But, uh, but I think in the past, and, and, and Simon alluded to it earlier, is, is that as, uh, as EOH, um, no more, but, but IOCO, uh, I joined three years ago. And when I came into the organization, I got enormously frustrated by what I saw was an inordinate amount of opportunity and, and solutioning to the market. Yet we weren't able to bring it together for the customer. So the customer ended up getting bespoke solutions, well done and, 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 and brilliantly done, but yet never under the construct of, of uh, this application data um, and compute notion. So, so what is compute and platform technology services or, or technology? It's really the foundation that enables the, the access, um, the processing, the movement and the storage plus the security uh, of the data that operates and, and runs your business, the data and applications. We talk about it as, as the, rail, the rail tracks on which your applications and data reside in your organization. And the two-speed world for me is, is moving even faster than that. We're living in this world where there's the yin and the yang, where, where businesses are under enormous pressure to digitize they're under enormous pressure from competitors. They're under enormous pressure from new entrants. And they need to do all the things that have been articulated in the application uh, and data world to stay ahead. But, but fundamentally, at the bottom, we need that compute and we need that layer that, that will enable those, um, those for example, uh, secure containerized environments to be spun up that DevOps, uh, dev people can use overnight. And that's shifting and that's moving very rapidly. So, so in the compute world, we've brought together what was very sort of rigid um, data built, uh, data center build people on premise, uh, a, a cloud business that really was a hosted environment, uh, our connectivity business, um, together with uh, security, and all really operated in a siloed, a siloed manner. And we've brought that together to be able to come and have a conversation with you around what you need as a platform to enable your business to move to the next level in terms of your journey uh, as, a digital, as a digital business or into the digital era. Um, it, it, is, it is moving very fast. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of work with the hyperscale providers. Um, and, and what we want to be able to do is take you on a journey. So from where you are today, my guess is as a business, you're going to need to move to a new, a new destination. Some businesses are need needing to move really, really rapidly. Some businesses are needing to move a little bit slower. But those businesses needing to move rapidly start talking about the move into cloud. They start talking about the move into the hyperscale, hyperscale world. Um, and, and I think the key element for us and the key thing is that we need to understand what you're trying to do as a business what you're trying to do with the applications, where you're trying to move your business, and, and take you on a compute journey that allows you to do exactly what you want for the business, but have the underlying compute, um, compute platform. I, I touched on, and Simon touched on an element um, just now around, around people uh, and solutions and services. So not only is it about helping you design uh, and build those uh, solutions, but it's also about managing and, and operating those solutions. And I'm going to kick into what I think is still fundamental and instrumental to all of this, and that's, that's around the people that enable this. Um, and I want to finish off with a, with a little story that really talks to the fabric of what we want to carry into, uh, into the IOCO business. And it is a, a couple of gentlemen who um, do some work for us uh, in managing SASA, which is uh, the social grants agency, as, as most of you will know. Um, and these two gentlemen uh, couldn't remotely repair a printer. And they couldn't remotely repair the printer because the, the outlet or wh wherever the place was that the grants were being paid from was in the middle of Lesikisiki in the trans Sky. It was a 600 kilometer round trip. These two gentlemen put a printer in their car, jumped in the car and drove the 300 kilometers that they had to to Lesikisiki. And you can imagine through the trans Sky, those that haven't been through it, it's quite rural and it's quite bumpy and there are a lot of potholes if there's tar. Um, anyway, they got, they, got to the, uh, they got to their destination and uh, they walked past this long queue of people into the, 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 the outlet or whatever it's called and they, they replaced the printer and their job was done. And when they were walking out, 
They stopped and they looked at the queue that had now began, began, uh, began to move. And they thought, well, well is, is that what was stopping the queue from moving, the fact that they couldn't print? And it's exactly what it was. And what they also noticed was on the side, propped up against the wall, was a wheelbarrow with a young fellow standing next to the wheelbarrow. And they engaged the young fellow. And what transpired was that this young fellow and his gorgle had bartered back home, 14 kilometers from this particular Sasa outlet, had bartered their spades and buckets for a wheelbarrow. Because that's the way they work in that rural area. They barter and they borrow from each other. They had walked 14 kilometers with that wheelbarrow to the outlet to get the Sasa grant. When they arrived that day, because the computer was down or the printer was down, they weren't able to pay the grant. But 14 kilometers in a wheelbarrow through the Transcar takes a long time. So there was no chance for them to go back. So they slept the night. And I think the moral of the story is that what, what it brought home for us is that all the stuff we do for our customers and, and what our customers do for their customers is, is hugely valuable. And, and, it's, and it's, it taught us that it's not about our customer necessarily only, but it's certainly about us understanding what, uh, what our customers do and how, what value they, they bring in the world. And um, so it's people, it's about people and process. Um, thanks, Vasha. Thanks, Sepa. I'm looking very, very forward to the IOCO journey. Um, I truly believe it's going to translate into um, some wonderful wow things for our customers.